The last time I saw you in person, we were with Carmen, Argenziana. Uh, a word about Carmen. Well, you know, uh, it's funny. We all work together in Stargate and, and we all uh, know each other. But it, it, when you're in Vancouver and you're working very long hours and you have a family, as you know, the other cast members did, there's not enough. There's not really a lot of time to socialize, which is why we enjoy going to conventions, because there's nothing but time to socialize. And you see each other as well as the yeah, fans. Absolutely. But see, if you're out of town, because, of course, I live in Los Angeles, as Carmen did, and you're working in Vancouver now, you know, who do you go eat dinner with? Who do you go? And so, you know, Carmen and I had, you know, wonderful times together and, uh, you know, great laughs. He's a very, very, um, he was a very sort of humble guy, almost to the point where you're thinking, come on, you've been doing this 50 years. Will you stop? Will you stop? You know, give me yourself, you know, but uh, he, he was just unique. But, and we would always laugh because uh, there were a couple of incidents uh, at conventions where people would come up and say to Carmen, you know, you're, you're my favorite character in Stargate and I love your relationship with, uh, with Amanda and I just can't tell you how great it is. And then they put my picture in front of it. Oh you know, my they, God! <laughs> really? Yeah. No yeah. way. Yeah. I kid you not. Oh I kid my gosh! You, not. you know, maybe they left and, their glasses back in their hotel rooms. Well, you know, it was obviously I didn't have my 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 cap on. It was one of those uh, other pictures. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, there were several where, for instance, the, the there was this. You know, the fire. Uh, the scene when, you know, the alternate reality when Tilk is uh, a fireman and rescues me and I'm in the yeah, hospital. Yeah, changeling. I, I, That's true. Yeah, I changeling, right. You know, I don't have my thing. So, But they do the same to me. Listen, <laughs> they, not only would they do that to me, I, I tell you, it's so funny. I can't tell you the number, uh, not tons, but several times people have come up to me. And again, they love my work. They love my work. And, and then they, they tell me, and please, I have something here I want you to sign from Amadeus. Because in a certain light, in certain Emory Abraham. People, well, yeah, oh, I can oh, yeah. I can see that. Oh, but yeah. Carmen, you know, yeah. <laughs> absolutely Jeez. no. So you know, when they do that, I, before I used to disappoint them and say, "Well, you know, thank you so much, but I'm not." You know, now, I just listen and I sign. I say, you know, I <laughs> you sign, sign my it. name. I don't. Yes, I don't sign F. Murray's name, but I sign my name and I give it to them. They'll catch up. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the IMDB people, you know, will eventually well, say, um, look it up. Yeah. You know, and one other thing, David, it's so funny. For the longest time, uh, people always would say, you know, you look like someone when they always would say, you should play Amadeus Salieri. You should be in Amadeus and play Salieri. And I hear that. I heard that for 30 years. And finally, just maybe 18 months ago, I got a chance to do it. So it was really, yeah. oh yeah, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful uh, experience to down in San Diego. I did it. Uh, uh, and it, it was, well, I figure it's now or never, you know, That's generally true too. It's, well, it's played by a younger guy generally. And then, but here's what was so cool. The guy, the director, uh, he had seen some other work I'd done. He said, I really want you to do it now. You're a little older. And he, he tell you why he says, generally young actors do it. Cause they think, you know, and then they put the, because he's an old man, it's a flashback, and he sees all these old actors, you know, playing. And he says, "You," he says, "we, we don't have the wig. We just, you know, my hair was longer, and you're of an age. You age up a little bit, ten years, five years, and we will put the dark wig on you. And because, guess what? I can, I can still move. I can still, I'm fine. I can give the illusion of youth. So anyway, uh, it, I finally that was on my bucket list and. I got a chance to to do it, and I was really grateful. I have been watching you on television, not with the intent of following you specifically, although you are an amazing talent. You just keep on popping up. Terminator, Once Upon a Time. Of course, you know, Stargate, obviously. Do you consider yourself blessed? Well, <laughs> you know, uh, if you're a working actor, you're blessed. You know, I... I we belong to a profession where, you know, on any given week, over 90% of us are unemployed, more, 94%. Uh, so the notion of, of being able to work uh, is, is exactly that. It's a blessing. Uh, you know, I remember when I finished school, uh, I went to school in Philadelphia, 
And at the end, you know, because you're in school, you're training. It's it's sort of the equivalent, although not as practical as medical school or law school mm. in terms of in terms of hours, in terms of intensity when you're in a training program. And I remember I was approaching the end of it and I wrote a little note said professional acting work East Coast. And that was sort of like a an affirmation because I had nothing in front of me. And uh, and it sort of worked out. I mean, it ended up being mainly on the West Coast, but uh, I'm OK. Yeah, I'm OK. And it, uh, uh, it's been a long, uh, busy and worrying and rewarding and every sort of um, mental state you can imagine. That's sort of an actor's life. But, uh, did you, but I have been blessed. Did you expect to find yourself where you are at this point in your life? Or is this like Don S. Davis always said, you know, this is not where I wanted to be. It's wonderful, but it's not what I had in mind. Yeah, you know, I probably didn't have uh, much in mind. No, it's a complete surprise. I wasn't, you know, it's a, there's a term, uh, you know, a lifer for, for an actor. They're the people that knew at eight and they started singing and dancing and just, you know, they just knew that's what they were going to do. I didn't get involved until college. Uh, and so consequently, it led me, it's taken me all over the world. It's, um, it's allowed me to study probably the most fascinating thing in the world, which is human behavior. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just provided me with a wonderful, uh, uh, carte blanche to a kind of experience that, um, I would never have. Uh, and it's, it's funny. It's sort of what an actor, uh, you know, some people describe the primary question of an actor is the, you know, what is it like to be you, you know, and from there, you know, actors really don't want to be themselves. Uh, we have to use ourselves, our bodies, our voices, uh, our emotions, uh, all of those things. But we we want to adapt. We want to change. And sometimes, you know, that's where the aspect of play comes in. I mean, to give you an example, I remember uh, really the f I had done several films, but the first big studio film I did was uh, The Legend of Zorro. And I just remember pinching myself, walking to set in these 19th century sort of Spanish nobleman uh, clothes and getting on a horse to ride in to the scene where there were 500 extras. Oh my gosh. Screaming at the top. And if you watch the opening, the opening scene of uh, Legend of Zorro, you know, and I could, and it, I remember just thinking, oh my God, uh, you know, it, it's just one, it's sort of like, it's the equivalent of, uh, uh, well, this is not X-rated, so I guess I can say it. Yeah. Uh, you know, the first time you make love and you pinch yourself because the other person is so beautiful. And you, you wake You're up fortunate. and remember. Yes, you, you just pinch yourself, you know. You think, oh, my God. Uh, and so that was what, um, you know, that was where acting took me. Now, to be fair, and we must be fair, lest there be young people out there who think, you know, oh, just climb that stairwell and <laughs> and I can have that experience. It's uh, it's a grind. You know, they say uh, there's an old saying, you know, they pay us for worrying and waiting. The acting is free, you know, so. I, uh, I, I can I can definitely attest to that, you know, going and and visiting you guys on set for years and years. Uh, I never crossed paths with you on set, but it's waiting. It's a it lot of waiting and, you know, you have to know your lines and be on your marks and there's nothing to stop you from not knowing your lines, but you're going to make 150 people miserable if you don't. Right. And, and lest we be clear, that's the good waiting. The waiting you're describing is the waiting when you have a job. You have a job and you're on set. You're, you know, the, you're working. There's craft services or they used to be before the pandemic. You know, there are, you know, there's a million things. It, they're long hours, but you're employed. I'm talking about the waiting in between jobs. I'm talking Oh, about I understand jobs. now. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, you know, for me, uh, for instance, it, it, one of the things about an actor is you have to look in the mirror very hard. And I was fortunate enough that when I finished school, I managed to get theater work. And it was a type of theater work that was seasonal work. In other words, I was working from uh, May 
uh, excuse me, from uh, September until the end of May. And then I do something else in the summer, uh, which hardly exists now. It's very, very rare. But it gave me that. Be I say that because actors make sense at different ages. I was never a, a young leading man. That wasn't, you know, so the notion of me coming down to L.A. and pursuing my, uh, you know, acting as a younger, say in my 20s, would have been, I would have worked, but it, it wouldn't have been very rewarding. So instead of that, and this was completely, you know, by accident, it wasn't a choice, I ended up doing 15 years of rep work, you know, and, and when you do that, you make a living, certainly not a lot of money, but you pay your bills, you have a regular life, you have a car. Can you explain you, rep work for me? Well, you know, rep work is when uh, you you're doing a season of plays. You're not hired for just one thing. For, for instance, if they were doing a, a play about Braytag, then they would think, oh, Tony is a good Braytag. But the very next play, they'll be doing a different kind of play, and they'll think, well, you know, he's not quite right. In rep, the whole notion is, is to expand the actor. So you get to play the roles you're right for, and the roles you have no, <laughs> no reason to be playing, but it, it makes for wonderful growth. And how it, the sum becomes greater than its parts is because you're working with the same group of people. So in one season, for instance, I could play Iago in Othello. Mm. I could play, uh, uh, you know, a uh, Clifford Odette's urban thing. But I'll play the gentleman caller in The Glass Menagerie. Now, for the people who know Tennessee Williams, The Glass Menagerie, I am not your typical casting for that. Mm -hmm. But that's where the challenge is. And, you know, you get a finicky artistic director who's interested in presenting a slate of plays to an audience, but is also interested in the growth of the company. And you get opportunities like that. And, uh, and that's unique. You know, that's really unique. Whereas in television and film, it's a different schedule. I mean, you are so busy in the theater, you can be. And if you're lucky, you're doing big films. You're very busy in film and television. But in between, they asked... Uh, they asked Robert Duvall what the key to survival in Los Angeles was. And, and he looked at them and said, hobbies, hobbies, and more hobbies. The reason for that is you'll drive yourself crazy. That, you know, neurosis for the actor comes in not being able to uh, work, to not be able to get what's inside of them out. You know, they're, they're in a poker game that's all in in a kind of way, you know what I mean? And, and you know, there are very few parents, if any, who would say, oh, I want my son to be grow up and become an actor, <laughs> you know, because they want to spare you. Yeah, that they're going to be spending a great of, deal of time uh, unhappy. Uh, certain, yeah, 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 you can be. And, and so getting back to your original question, do I consider myself blessed without a question? I consider myself blessed. And that was from the get-go, you know. I, uh, with the exception of Los Angeles, I never faced prolonged employment in Los Angeles. I have, uh, you know, months, uh, months on months. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, previous to that, it was uh, pretty unique. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel, or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.